Hey, what's up everyone, Ben at ProFixer, and today on the channel, I have an iPhone 10 screen that I've already removed from a device. I'm gonna be showing you how to safely remove the ambient light sensor as well as the flood illuminator from the screen itself in order to transfer it to a new screen that's not cracked. This is very easy to do, however, it can seem like a daunting task if you've never done it before. Everything on my workbench is linked up in the description below, so be sure to check that out as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Without further ado, let's get started. Just like with all my other repairs, I use a blue heat mat to warm up the screen. I have this one set to 60 degrees, which will be enough to loosen the adhesive, making the flood illuminator and ambient light sensor so much easier to remove. I use this for any small part removal. It just makes everything come out without having to pry or put any kind of undue pressure on any kind of flex cables or any other components, which is really nice. So with it set to 60 degrees and with the screen heat saturated, you wanna have removed all of your front screws. Depending on the particular model that you're working on, it could have you know, three or four, depending uh, which one it is. On this particular 10, this one has three. And we've already removed those, and now we're going to flip over this speaker. Once the speaker is out of the way, it exposes the flood illuminator and the ambient light sensor. I'm gonna use a little bit of alcohol to loosen up the adhesive on those. At first, I was a little weary that alcohol would damage those, but these seem to be completely impervious to any kind of damage while using alcohol, and it makes the sensors come out so much easier. So using about four or five drops of alcohol on each one, this will help to, to uh, loosen the adhesive on each of these sensors. What you'll do at this point after it's soaked into the device just a little bit, you'll take some tweezers and you want to remove this particular sensor first. There is a clear plastic bracket that runs on the front of the screen. If you can slip some tweezers between there, you'll be able to uh, lift this sensor out pretty easily. And actually, if you grab it closest to the microphone side, it almost is hinged because it's connected to this other sensor over here. Once that one is out, it's ready to remove uh, the other. So go ahead and um, reach down to the side of the connector or into the side of the sensor, and then gently lift upwards. If you have some tweezers that are kind of sharp, this will definitely work for this particular uh, sensor and makes it so much easier to pull out. So what we have here now is we do have both of the sensors loose and I didn't have to put any kind of pressure on the sensors themselves. They realistically just fell right out. The microphone itself is safe up here on the top as well. If you go ahead and hook underneath there, that one should come out very easily and not necessarily because of the alcohol, but just because it's been heated and heat saturated on the blue mat. And now if you take a look at this front sensor, it is ready to transfer to a new device. Um, definitely be very careful. You don't want to put any undue stress on any of the uh, bends or on any of the corners of the flex. So be careful with your flex while moving it to the new screen. So it's easy as that. Just use a little bit of alcohol with the blue heat mat and your face ID sensors come out extremely easy. Hopefully you found this interesting and you can apply it in your own repair shop with your own repairs to make them a little more sure and a little quicker. Everything that I used in the video is linked up in the description below. So be sure to check all of that out. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit the like button. I appreciate y'all watching and I'll catch y'all in the next video.